Hey, today I thought I'd talk about an interesting subject. Uh, I had a pretty long conversation in my, uh, my personal Discord that I have for the channel. I'll go ahead and I'll link that if you guys want to join there. I don't really <laughs> plug it for any reason or anything, but if you want to get a hold of me, it's definitely a good place to go. We're basically talking about how, you know, uh, how creating content for niche games has changed uh, pretty much since I started. Now, obviously, when I started, you know, people who did stuff like this, we, we didn't get any bones thrown at us at all. You know, we had to pay for everything out of our pocket. You know, the companies didn't care about us. You know, they were still very reliant on game journalism. And I know that there's been many, many videos about the, the issues with that. You know, we just had, uh, you know, that guy that uh, he runs a channel very similar to mine. Uh, he actually talks a lot about game mechanics and he does... Uh, more in-depth reviews than I do, you know, with the heavy editing and stuff. Uh, you know, he got his shit plagiarized by IGN, and he got this big, you know, boost off it. <laughs> like, those kind of things didn't happen, you know, before. And, and now we, we have, uh, you know, cool stuff like, you know, what they had, like, Maximilian and Hell Pockets and uh, Rhyme Style, a bunch of those guys that, you know, they mostly play niche games. They were all at, you know, Bandai Namco testing out the cooler for Dragon Ball Fighters. I think it's interesting that it's happening now. It's just uh, it kind of makes me feel bad for both myself and my friends because we are not getting the same opportunities that others are, or rather we are, but we're getting it far too late. And you know, I know a lot of people would probably still be making videos on a lot of the friends that I made when I first made this account back in 2005, so almost 15 years ago. I'm sure I wouldn't have lost contact with a lot of those guys if you know both niche, you know publishers and developers and indie game developers actually cared about, about us at that time. You know, now it seems like the all those people are all very dependent on people like me because, uh, you know, it, it's far cheaper to just give someone a digital key for a game than it is to, you know, do anything else, really. You know, you can pay thousands for promoted tweets and stuff, but you have to figure... Like how many people have ad block? You know, I I put ad block on all my stuff just to protect my computer at this point. You know, I also have an anxiety disorder, and a lot of ads are are meant to, you know, fear monger you and make you anxious and make you want to go buy some medication or something. I actually had to turn all that shit off because it was not good for my, my mental health and the symptoms that come from my anxiety. I personally don't mind if people ad block my stuff, but I'm sure these big companies that you know used to be paying thousands and stuff to, to market for ads, you know, they're probably not too happy that people are all blocking it. So it's actually more beneficial for them to, uh, you know, give keys to people like me. Like I got Blade Strangers. I haven't really played it that much. Uh, I, I did some, some online matches today and I pretty much got bodied. I'm not really used to it. I'll try to get that port view out. Uh, I just kind of had a shitty day and feel like doing it today. But I just wanted to let people know, uh, if you're starting a channel, you definitely should take keys if you can. You should definitely try to get keys. Uh, it's probably harder if you're a small channel. You are going to get a lot of shit thrown at you, like, uh, to warn you. You know, the, the stuff that you see on the channel is like, th those are games that are offered to me that I actually, you know, deem, I, I wouldn't say deem worthy, but that they're games that I actually like playing and I liked enough to actually, you know, play them enough to, to make an overview for them and more gameplay. You know, Code of Princess EX was a good example. I was interested in that because it was a beat em up. And uh, they were nice enough to give me the key, so I made sure to make one guide for it. I made an overview and I did some raw gameplay. And I, you know, I would have done more, but uh, I didn't like the game enough to really <laughs> warrant doing that. And I think what people don't realize is that when you get a key, the only thing, you're only going to get anything out of it if you actually put work into it. You know, you don't just get. Uh, a free key in your channel just doesn't grow by a thousand subscribers. You actually have to, you know, work hard at it. You know, Dynasty Warriors 9 was given to me for free. I had to pay for the season pass by myself because there were some complications with the keys. But either way, you know, I worked my ass off on it. it actually grew my channel quite a bit. You know, there are keys that admittedly I haven't really gotten a whole lot out of because either I didn't like the game or I just didn't really have the time to go in depth with it. And I just think it's an interesting situation. Like we've gone from companies not caring about people like me to them like basically we're like the the foundation for this shit getting actually <laughs> promoted and things like that, which is a good thing. I think it's a good thing for everybody because you have people who can actually play the games and are passionate about them and can actually explain the mechanics and game journalists have just so much shit thrown at them, you know, both in terms of 
people criticizing them, which I, I think is warranted. I think right now is probably a really shitty time to be a game journalist because of the whole uh, IGN plagiarism thing where the guy, uh, he made some like half-assed apology where it's like he, he challenged people to find um, you know more things that he plagiarized and the internet uh, actually did that and found that basically everything he had ever published was plagiarized. <laughs> but, you know, they also have a lot of games that they have to work on at the same time and that kind of poses an issue of like how how hardcore can you get on a game when you've got deadlines and you've got like a dozen other games you need to get out in the same time frame you know with me i, I kind of just take what i can get and i try to make sure that it's something that would benefit the channel you know stuff like sword of the guardian i haven't played that much and you know, i've gotten other games too uh you know recently code of princess ex which like i said uh, i liked enough to get 100 percent on it but i didn't really want to play it further because i i felt that they in particular, didn't do a good job of actually listening to the complaints. And, like, you look at the Steam reviews for that game, and most of them, you know, it's not, like, normal petty stuff, like, you know, hey, the game crashed, I'm going to give it a thumbs down and refund it. Like, most of it was actually pretty constructive criticism, you know, saying that the game was, was slow-paced and it just didn't feel satisfying to play, and that's not really something they fixed with that game. Anyway, I don't really know what the point of this is. I just think it's, uh, it's interesting, you know, the beta testing I've been doing, uh, you know, the things I've done with a lot of games in the past year, really. You know, Wizard of Legend, I, I gave a lot of feedback on that. And, you know, it, it's cool to have these opportunities. It's a shame that YouTube has basically just fucked things up for people like me. Like, I, I see channels with, like, exponentially more subscribers than mine. Uh, they're still struggling to get views, too. I, I really don't understand what's wrong with the algorithm. It seems like they are just trying to push people towards the... You know, the big verified channels that have all approved content and shit like that. Which is a shame. You know, there are a lot of people, you know, at above and below my level that make really good content that just don't get noticed. I'm glad that I've seen uh, a lot less bitching about people having Patreons. I think it's, it's, a, it's an, a necessary evil at this point to run these channels. You basically need to have a Patreon. And if you're a gamer, then you need to be able to be proactive and promote yourself to these companies and indie developers and get keys because otherwise it's just not going to be sustainable. Uh, you know, like, Code of Princess EX was a $40 game. Like, if I had bought that, I have to admit, I probably would have traded it in because I, you know, I felt like I did everything with it. The combat was not deep or fast or satisfying enough for me to, to really warrant playing it further. So it's really a great blessing that I got the key. You know, I got like 15 hours out of the game. I made a couple videos. I mean, it, it did pretty well. All things considered, there, there wasn't really a whole lot to cover in that game anyway, since it was uh, pretty much similar to the other two versions. But my advice to you guys, uh, if you want to start a channel, you definitely should swallow your pride and make a Patreon. Uh, definitely try to look around, uh, you know, make an account on Keymailer. You know, try to kind of build some uh, some notoriety in the games that you play. You know, if you're good at like fighting games. I'm not sure how often they give out keys for fighting games. I didn't even ask for the Blade Strangers key. They just kind of randomly plopped it in my email. But I imagine fighting games is, is probably something that maybe uh, would be a genre where people will get keys more often because those are the games where it's the hardest to explain the mechanics. Blade Strangers actually has a pretty good tutorial. It is not on the level of like Skullgirls and uh, Unist, but it's pretty close. Uh, I'm, I'm curious to see uh, how Capcom will actually work with the Devil May Cry community because I think it's it's definitely in their best interest to actually give that game to people who have been playing it for a long time and can actually showcase it well. Uh, just last week we had Daedrin who's a, he's a pretty hardcore character action game player. He's like not, you know, toppest of the toppest level, but he knows what he's doing. He actually put up, I think he did like three runs there. He sat through the line con at Gamescom in Germany, Germany <laughs> and... Uh, he made pretty much the best uh, gameplay videos for that that are out there right now. The only one that was really, I'd argue, on that level was the 4Gamer one, which was obviously done by a person who had experience with the genre in the past. I hope that they will uh, actually interact with the community. I don't really think that I'm at the level that I could really do a whole lot with uh, an early copy of DMC5, but I think it's going to be in their best interest to actually give it to people who can explain the mechanics and showcase it well, because honestly... I watched as much of the Gamescom footage as I could, and there was a lot of it I just couldn't stomach because it was like just journalists playing on the the assist mode, just mashing triangle. And I understand that you know not everybody plays these games for the, the mechanics and mastering them. They don't have the time or the patience or the the concentration or dedication to do it. But 
when you're playing a game like that, you definitely want to see like what's capable, you know, of, with the mechanics and stuff. So I hope that they will uh, continue to do that. I, I know that they have done that kind of thing. They did that kind of thing most recently with uh, probably Marvel Infinite. You know, they did a bunch of early events for that, if I remember correctly. I think a couple people had early copies, and they actually, for what it's worth, they actually did a couple of decent, uh, like, primer tutorial videos for it when it came out. Obviously, that game was pretty much just foobar from the start because of Disney's you know, corporate meddling, but <laughs> I think that they did a decent job with that. I I'm curious to see if they are actually going to go the way of, uh, you know, publishers like Namco. Like, Namco has been really great with interacting with the, uh, the content creator community. Like, just last week, I think they had that Naruto striker like big event and something and like pretty much everybody there was like uh, a pretty hardcore like anime content creator you know the guys that mostly play like all the Dragon Ball games and Naruto and, and stuff like that I thought it was pretty cool to see you know obviously not all the games that they make are my cup of tea but it's definitely interesting to me how they are basically dependent on those people to, to market their games because they know that journalists can't really show those kind of mechanically rich games at the, uh, you know, the way that they're supposed to be showed. It's kind of, it makes me a little depressed, to be honest, because uh, I actually applied for a beta tester job at Namco uh, pretty much right when I started this channel, so right, right around 05 or 06, and I got rejected, and, uh, you know, I tried a bunch of other times, and I never really landed anything but focus groups, which are basically just, like, one-time things that you do, and you get paid a flat rate. And I, I kind of wonder, like, if I had been born, like, 10 years later, like, how many opportunities I would have, but now I'm kind of like, <laughs> I'm like a relic of a bygone era, and a, a lot of, I know a lot of people who are still, you know, doing, like, mechanics-heavy games and stuff probably feel the same way. I hope that we'll get more interaction from these companies, and they actually will kind of help us grow. It, it's cool that, uh, Enmas, you know, the guys that localize closers are, are pretty much doing that exact same thing. Uh, pretty much everybody who's been partnered is, like, a hardcore player, uh, I don't really know much about the other games that they play. I, I didn't really like Critica enough to continue with it. I don't care for Terra, but pretty much all the closers guys, it's, it, it's not like they just got, you know, partner because they're whales or something. You know, they didn't just partner them because they, they dropped like a $1,000 on, on the game a month or something. They actually partnered them because they all have pretty good communities. You know, they're pretty good people, and they're obviously pretty decent at the game. You know, they know how to educate people on the stuff. They're, some of them have made guides on the reddits and the official forums and stuff like that. I think it's cool to see and that's why I was really happy to get that position. Obviously it's not really going to make me rich or anything, you know, like the the compensation they've given hasn't been the best so far, but I feel that it will improve in the future. I think they're still kind of working out the kink, the kinks. I know that the, uh, what is it called, the, the GEPD or whatever, uh, the thing that happened in Europe, uh, that definitely kind of messed things up for them and they had to kind of redo the the process and the method of how to partner people but I watched their stream yesterday and they were pretty much talking about how they want to you know help small streamers grow they're actually not, not like shooting for the big time you know they're not shooting for like the the gigantic channels which is a good thing I, I think a lot of these companies are very misguided a lot of times they'll like you know they'll, they'll, they'll take a game like you know closers or like blade strangers or something and they'll give it to some like big, you know, Fortnite esports streamer, and they'll play it once, and then never play it again. And most people in there will just be complaining that it's not Fortnite, or they'll say it's a dumb weeb game, or <laughs> you know, the graphics look like a Flash game or something. I, I don't really think that that does them much good in the long run. I'm sure that they do sell a couple copies, but it's like they they don't even really stick with it. And when you like actually partner somebody who actually likes those games and is passionate enough to you know at least make a mechanics overview. You know, I don't. You know, completely adore every single game that I get for free, but I, I do my best to kind of accommodate everybody who does give me the key. And it's going to be interesting to see what happens in the next few years in terms of uh, how much more of these companies will actually interact with the hardcore community because I think it's in their best interest. Obviously, uh, you know, a content creator key costs nothing. I I'm sure part of the reason why these companies didn't really interact with people at the beginning of the YouTube era is because, you know, digital distribution was still not great. You know, internet still sucks across most of the world, you know, I had pretty shitter, shitty internet for the first several years that I lived here. It was only until about, uh, I think, late 2015, early 2016, where uh, we actually got better internet in the area, and I was able to, to up, you know, upload things and not have it take all day. I think that's part of the reason why it's easier now, and you can just generate a key and give it to somebody and have them 
you know, make a bunch of videos and, you know, even if they only get a couple hundred or a couple thousand subscribers, you know, chances are they've sold at least a couple copies and that's more than worth it considering <laughs> it costs literally nothing for them to make those keys. Anyway, I just wanted to encourage people. Uh, I have made videos in the past about how to make things on a, a lower budget or rather how to run a channel on a lower budget. Uh, that video is a little outdated now because Nam uh, not Namco, but Amazon has, has definitely fucked things up for low-income gamers like me. Uh, I'm sure you've heard, but Amazon Prime basically removed the 20% uh, off pre-orders. So I, I pre-ordered pretty much as much as I could, but pretty much everything else I mentioned in there is still true to this point. Uh, you should definitely look for that video on my channel if you're interested. I'll try to make another one, but uh, I basically covered all the bases there. I told people how to buy things for cheap and how to actually get content creator keys. Uh, Keymailer is definitely one of the best places, but a, a lot of times they have things on there that are listed that the, the companies or the publishers like actually don't interact with. Like I don't think uh, like Namco and stuff, I don't think they actually do key requests from there. I think you have to actually contact them directly. I can tell you for a fact that I got the code of Princess EX key by emailing their PR account. Uh, and, you know, I, I tried to make it sound as professional as possible, but <laughs> they don't even really seem to care about that at, at this point. You know, it, it, most of the time, I usually just tell the truth. I just tell them like, "Hey, I'm a, I'm a YouTuber. You know, I have a decent-sized channel, and I focus on stylish action games and explaining the mechanics and overviews and making guides and stuff like that." And usually, that's that's all I have to do. It's not like I have to give them a a 20-page resume or, <laughs> or write them an essay or anything. I just wanted people to know it's actually far easier now to get free games and to grow your channel off that than it was just a few years ago. Uh, I, I can tell you from experience that uh, up until like maybe three years ago, like people like Squillow and I, we didn't get anything for free at all. We pretty much had to pay for everything out of our own pockets, which is, uh, you know, it can be easier or hard for some people. I know Squillow works a full-time job and he's busy a lot, so he can't do as much recording as he'd like. For me, it's more that I just live on a low income. Like, I have SSI and Patreon and, you know, a couple peanuts for ad revenue. <laughs> That's pretty much all I live off of. So, you know, it's kind of hard for me to afford new things. And I'm definitely thankful for the opportunities I've had. Uh, I'm glad that these companies are realizing that, you know, you can just give a key to somebody and they, they can definitely do a better job of marketing your game for effectively free. And they actually get something that they want to play in exchange. I think it's definitely a great relationship. It's a shame that it didn't happen earlier, but I'm sure there's a lot of problems with distribution, you know, digital distribution and stuff that's kind of made that more difficult. Anyway, that's it. I just wanted to talk about this. I think it's a pretty hot subject right now because a lot of uh, small channels are definitely getting more and more keys lately. You know, I get a lot thrown at me that I wouldn't even bother playing, but I think it's cool that I even considered. Unfortunately, I don't have unlimited time and I don't have unlimited patience to really play games that I don't like and I don't want to just rag on a game because that's not really something I particularly like doing. I like to try to you know talk about the faults of a game and the issues and hope that they get improved but I don't always want to just take a game that I won't like at all so I am very selective. I'm, I'm definitely curious to see like you know there are a few really big Twitch streams that uh, pretty much like primarily or exclusively play indie games like I can't imagine what their inboxes are like. They must have a ton of like shovelware <laughs> thrown at them like every day they wake up and check their Gmail. I'm not quite at that level, but it, it definitely is cool. I've had a lot of uh, a lot of the games I've covered recently have been for free, and I'm definitely gonna try to put more varied content on the channel. Uh, I think that the rest of this year is pretty barren. You know, there's uh, there's Mega Man 11, and there's the Hokotono Candy Kuza game, and as far as I'm concerned, that's pretty much all I'm gonna be covering aside from Orochi 4, so it's going to kind of be a little bit of a little barren time, and then DMC 5 is in March, I believe that's like, a, I think it's a week before or after my birthday, I don't remember what the exact release date is, but you know, in between those, I'm definitely going to be playing more small stuff, like my motivation with the channel has been a little low because the views have been so bad, I think that they've really fucked up the algorithm if people a lot bigger than me are having the same problem, you know, my my depression blames me for it, you know, blames myself for it, but I know that it's actually just, you know, the bullshit that YouTube's doing, so if you guys want to support me, uh, you know, you can check out my Patreon if you want something in return, go ahead and let me know. I definitely am going to need more funds, uh, probably throughout the rest of the year to pay off this PC upgrade bill, and then, uh, you know, try to have a little bit of a buffer for new games as well. Anyway, hope this helps you guys, and I'll catch you guys later. Peace.